and welcome back to my channel today we're doing part four of this border collie and we're going to start on the mouth now i'm not sure if we'll get all of the mouth done in this part it is quite a detailed and complicated area so we may just get the this corner section of the mouth the tongue and the teeth done we'll see if we can get the whole mouth done though Everything you need will be detailed in the description below, so that's part one to three, uh, the colours that I've used in this section. Um, and yeah, any comments, just leave them below. I hope uh, this is helpful, even if you just want to learn how to draw dog's mouth, uh, tongues, gums, teeth. So we're going to start with this uh, inner section of his mouth. And it is black, um, but I'm still going to apply base layer because we do have this reddish pinkish tone um, along here. So what I'm going to do is apply this base layer first and then we'll probably go in straight in with the black because it is a black area. Um, but we need to get be mindful of this pinkish tone along here. Um, so I'm just going to apply the base layer everywhere. This is the warm grey one that I'm starting with. Um, and I'm just doing this all along where this pinkish tone is. So that's, we're just going to have to be mindful, that's going to come down here. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to bring the warm grey base tone into the middle of the mouth. Now I haven't erased any of the graphite because we are going to be going in with black um, so that is just going to uh, cover the graphite lines. Okay I'm then going to get the uh, red violet and I'm very gently just going to start adding in this red violet very almost, very lightly still just mapping out where I can see this red violety colour. <laughs> it's really cold here today, so I'm sorry if I'm sniffly. Been out with a dog and it was freezing. Okay, and then I'm just gonna lightly we will smooth this out. We don't want it to look like fur, um, which it kind of does at the moment, but it will. we will smooth it out loud. Okay, I'm then going to get my black. Um, I'm just going to outline where this black is going to go. And I'm going to do this lightly. Don't press hard straight away, even though we know it's dark. I'm going to build it up first so that I've got um, the area mapped out before we go in and put, apply harder pressure. I'm going over the top of that red violet as well, just in this corner here. Now I'm doing, I'm constantly flicking back to my reference photo and I'm just following the shape of this mouth. Now you've got bits of loose hairs, include them. But it doesn't matter if it's not a hundred percent accurate to your um, to the reference photo. Don't worry too much. And that's going to be all dark here. And there's a bit of a lighter colour there. So I'm just going to slowly map in, and you'll see how this is going to start to look like the inside of his mouth once we really start darkening areas up. I'm going to start with that reddish pinkish tone first before we go straight in with a black okay i'm going to get the cinnamon 
I'm just going to bring the cinema over here. Where I can see these pinkish tones. There's also like a yellowish tone here. Hang on. Um, I'm just thinking about this yellowish tone. It's like there. We'll come back to that. <laughs> Right, I'm now going to use circular motions. I want this to start to be smoother looking. And this is over that pinkish, the, uh, over the red violet, sorry. Um, I'm applying the cinnamon and I'm also um, overlapping some of this black because we do want it all to blend. And come back in with the uh, reddish vi red violet. I don't know why I keep saying pinkish reddish. Something is obviously on my mind. <laughs> Again, just overlapping. I'm doing circular motions. And by doing circular motions, this will help smooth out this area. And then back on top with the cinnamon. Yeah, I'm also going to get the um, the dark sepia. Just run it along the edge of this reddish violet and cinnamon mixture, and that'll help blend into the um, into the black once we go straight in with the black. Again, circular motions. I think I'm also going to lightly glaze very gently over the top of this little corner here. It's a lot darker than the rest of this pinkish tone. Okay, I'm going to get the uh, Van Dyke Brown. In this bit that I can see like this yellowish brownish tone. Now this isn't a yellow brown but I just I think this will work nicely. If we do the Van Dyke brown and then I'm just gonna very lightly go over with the dark sepia. Okay, and then we've got this pinkish tone coming down the edge of this mouth here. So we're applying these lighter colours just where we can see them before I go in over with this black. Um, I'm going to use the dark sepia here. Just along here. may have to darken this pinkish bit up a bit um we'll see okay so we're gonna go in now with the black this area is black so um i'm not gonna add any other colors in i don't see any bluish tones coming through um so I'm going to go straight in with a black, but what I'm going to be doing is along this fur line where it's, the muzzle is obviously in front of this, you've got to be very wary of the, the fact that there is some of these hair strokes. So I'm going to add some in by going upwards, um, but at the same time I'm not too worried about getting them accurate because we can go in with the Tombow um and we can erase some of these lines to make it look natural we can use the slice tool so there's lots of ways to bring it back in the hairs if you don't want to add them in straight away and i am using quite hard pressure lighten up the pressure when you come to blend where that dark sepia and pink tone is 
yeah we're definitely going to need to darken this pinkish tone up but that's fine um and then i'm just gonna make sure that this lines up and then circular motions because i want it to look smooth now if you have like the derwent drawing black or the luminance black um, you can use those colours because they're a lot darker. Um, the thing with the polychromos is they are a transparent pencil, which is what makes them great for doing your layers. Um, but it does mean that this black isn't the darkest black out there. So if you wanted this to be really dark black, um, use like your Derwent, uh, Derwent Ivory Black, I think it is. Derwent Drawing Ivory Black um, or your Luminance Blacks. They will be more opaque. I'm not worried too much about these bits of hair being accurate to the reference photo as long as they're overlapping. I'm going to start getting that sense of this being in front. Oh, this muzzle being in front of the um, mouth and this section being behind, right. I'm going to just have to resharpen this to do there. So I'm just going to do along here, circular motions. You can see that I'm pressing quite hard now and um, we do want this to be black. Now you can slowly build up these layers um, if you wanted. You could use other colours like dark indigo, dark sepia, then go into your black. Um, but this area is black, so I'm just going to go straight in with black. Speed up your process. If an area is dark, get it dark. And we're going to be using black quite a bit in this dog. Um, when we come to the fur, we will be building up some of the layers. Some of the layers um, definitely have that bluish Payne's grey tone through it. Um, but yeah, do use your black. It still takes a bit of time. I'm trying to get all the tooth covered and a nice even coverage of this black. You can tell that I'm, the pencil's getting a bit blunt because it's not covering the tooth as much so I'm going to just um, sharpen this pencil. Okay, sharp pencil. So while it's still sharp I'm just going to do along this edge again. Now you could, if you wanted to get the um, white um, whiskery bits coming over before you add the black, you can indent the paper. Um, and that means that you can just add this black later without worrying about including them, avoiding them. Um, just use whichever method you feel most comfortable with. Okay, I'm just going to... Go over this area is where I can just see it's not dark enough. Right. Okay, I'm going to come back in with the dark sepia now. And I'm just going to go over parts of the black and just darken up these areas where the sepia is. Um, and then we definitely need to darken some more of these areas. So this needs to be darkened up. So what I'm doing is to darken this, I'm just glazing the sepia over the top of that pinkish tone. And that's just darken that up. And then lightly, again, just 
glaze in the sepia. Draw such darker some of these. Okay. So as you add more of the dark tones, you realise like, okay, this area needs to be darker. This area needs to be darker. We do need to darken this bit. So I'm just going to get the red violet again. Um, and I'm just going to glaze, go over the top of this red violet. Using some medium pressure. A bit harder now. Not too hard. I still want some tooth. Um, and then again, I'm going to glaze over the top with the dark sepia. And then this will be this inner mouth um, area complete. Uh, okay, so we have this um, area of his mouth done. So we're going to move next on to the uh, tongue. So when we're doing the tongue, especially this tongue, we can break it down into sections. So you obviously have the middle line. Um, we have the edge of the tongue here, the edge of the tongue here. So if we break it down into sections, it makes it more manageable. Also with tongues, some tongues on the photos look really wet. This guy's tongue doesn't look as wet. It's mainly his gums on the photo that look wet. Um, and obviously we want to make it look smooth. It's not too, too rough a surface. Um, especially on this photo, there's not much texture going on in the uh, reference photo. So I'm just going to start by uh, gently removing these guidelines. And I'm going to do this section first. So I'm just very lightly with my putty razor lifting that graphite. I'm then going in with uh, beige red. And I'm going to use this as a base layer. Now I'm going to use circular motions. I'm not pressing too hard. I don't want to flatten the tooth too much this time. Um, and I'm breaking this corner into a, a section. So this is like a triangle, a rounded triangle as one section to work on at first. And by breaking it down in sections, it just makes it more manageable. Just like we've done elsewhere, we've broken it all down into little sections. It makes it easier to focus. Okay, I'm then going to take the uh, Pink Madder Lake, very gently go over the top of this light flesh. Now by using these layers, we're going to build up the colour nicely on this tongue. Um, if you have the Granite Rose and the Pablos, um, I would use that as the base layer. Uh, but as I said, I'm doing this all in Polychromos just to make it easier for people. Um, okay, I'm then going to come in with the uh, Light Red Violet. And I'm just... Along here. So this is going to be our shadows, this light red violet. Okay, I'm then going to go back in with the light, the beige red. And I'm applying a bit more pressure now. Circular motions. And then back on top with the pink Madder Lake. A little mark on my paper there. Okay. And that's uh, that little section of the tongue done. So you can kind of see we're just going to do section by section as we do this tongue. Okay, I'm going to do this little fold that's coming up and over the tooth. Um, I'm going to do this bit first because it'll make doing the inner part of the tongue easier because then we won't have to worry about this section. So again, I'm just going to go in and lightly remove this graphite. So any areas where you know the graphite, uh, the colour pencils won't cover the graphite, um, 
I just remove it with a putty eraser. Um, I'm then going to go in again with the beige red. Um, and now I'm following the edge of this tongue. So I'm sort of curving my lines rather than doing straight lines. They're curving. So I'm following the form, the shape of this part of the tongue. And I'm not doing it all along here. So this is like the edge coming down, coming over these teeth. And that's going to come down there. Um, and then I'm going to get the uh, light. Um, no, I'm going to get the pink metal lake first. Again, over the top of this beige. Uh, over the, yeah, beige red. Just put this piece of paper. Okay, I've then got the Venetian red. And I'm just going to use this to line this edge here. Um, that's going to line the top of that to go ever so slightly there and along here. Okay, and then we're going to go back in with the pink Madder Lake. Um, maybe I've got the light red violet, I'm just not quite. Okay, and then the beige red just on top to try and help smooth it all out. Okay, and then we have the um, underneath of this um, lip. So I'm going to get, there's a real bright red tone. So I want the um, middle cadmium red here. Um, and I'm going to blend... Along here and down into the shadow. Okay. Um, so I'm then going to get the red violet. So this is this dark area down between these teeth. I'm going to just darken this up. So this is the red violet. Um, and I'm going to get the Caput Morton. Um, hang on, let me find it. Uh, so I've got the Caput Morton now, just in this corner. Um, and then I've got the Fuchsia, because it is quite, this edge is quite bright pink. Um so I'm just going to go along this edge and blend it down. Right, so um, I'm going to use this actually, use this fuchsia all along the edge of this lip here. Um, and then that's kind of the edge of this tongue. Just use a bit of red violet along this edge. I'm trying to not use too many colours, but there's quite a lot in this tongue. Um, and then the beige red, just to help smooth it all together. Like so. Okay, so we're going to keep going along the bottom edge. So I'm just going to gently remove the top of the graphite on these teeth and I'm just doing it at the top of the teeth um, I'm not removing any of the other bits just because we're not on that section yet um, okay and then I'm gonna very gently outline with a beige red as the base layer okay now I'm gonna go in with the light red violet 
Um, what have I done with that? Um, along the bottom of these teeth, this needs to be really sharp. Okay, so uh, make sure your pencil is very sharp. Um, this is a very faint line. And what you're going to do is we're just going along the edge of this tongue and the top of these teeth, constantly looking at the reference photo, the shape of these teeth. Um, and that's going to come down here. You can get that red violet in this corner here. Okay, and then I've got the uh, fuchsia again going over the top of that purple violet that we've just added. Okay, and then there is a... Um, so all I'm doing is I'm mapping in these darker shapes. So I'm using the purple violet as my shadow. Um, and I am just going to map in these little li oh, lines that I can see here. That's then going to go up that curve there. And I'm also making sure that I'm following the curves. By following these curves, we're going to start getting the 3D-ness of the um, tongue. So I'm coming back in with a beige red. Oh. There. Just as this base layer along here, and then we get the um, light red violet, and this part of the tongue we want to blend nicely in. So I'm curving this round. So this may be where we finish the tutorials, just by doing the tongue. It takes quite a while. I think what I'll do is I will upload the tongue um, and then straight away upload the rest of the um, tutorial uh, for the mouth because um, I think it'd be nice that people can get the whole mouth done. I, I don't know, it's a long process. <laughs> So I'm lightly using this uh, light red violet here. Okay, I'm going to use the um, pink metal lake. Going over the top of that pinkish, uh, the light pink violet. I'm making up colours in my head today. Okay, uh, get that beige red in here again. Back to the pink metal lake. See, we're starting to get a nice tongue form in them. Um, let's get the Venetian red in here as well. Uh, I use the Venetian red quite a bit in the tongues, actually. It's quite a nice pinkish red muted colour. It's drawing tongues quite nice. Um, um, actually, I'm going to get the cinnamon. Let's get the cinnamon. Um, do I want the cinnamon? Yeah, down here we want the cinnamon. Over the top of there. Okay, and then get this light red violet again. Just to darken these shadows. You see how just by layering the polychrome moss, she's starting to get some really nice colours in this tongue. She does have, she has some really nice colours, right. So I'm going to just lightly add the light purple violet here. And then I'm going to get, now this will surprise some people I think, but I've got the copper over the top of this light red violet here. It's going to give you that nice muted purplish grey colour that you can see. Um, 
on this tongue and then I'm just going to go over the top of all this with beige red you see how in it, that copper and that purple mix together nicely though we've got that nice purplish muted grey tone um, right I'm going to add the beige red here um, light red violet again as this shadow very gently over that beige red now remember you've got the edge of the tongue that you want to preserve here and that soft dark fish there so and all I'm doing is I'm just following the shapes I can see um, and then I'm actually going to use the gold here for again this muted colours over the top of that purplish violet and then the beige red on top Look in with that pink madder lake. Any areas that you think need to be just a little bit pinker, go in with your pink madder lake. I'll give you that nice pinkish tone back. Okay, I'm getting there. <laughs> so along here is quite grain colour, um, and we are going to start using some greys. Um, but first of all, I'm just going to about halfway here. We've still got this beige red colour, so I'm going to use that beige red here. Um, and we're going to do like we did here with the light purple, the uh, light red violet, sorry, and the copper. We're going to create that greyish purple tone, which is then going to start blending into the cooler tones that we can see. And the copper. Let's just see what it looks like with pink madder lake glazed over the top. But that's okay. It's quite a nice colour there, actually. Okay, right. So I'm now going to use the warm grey one as a base colour. Um, along. Let me just sharpen this. Okay. So the warm grey one along here and I'm going to have to be careful because obviously this is warm greys um, so just be careful as you use that as your base layer going around this tooth like so okay right I'm then going to get the warm grey 5 I bet you're all wondering warm grey 5 hang on that's 4 um, let me find this colour. Um, but yeah, there is a, a warm grey tone here, so I'm going to bring it along here. And we are going to glaze, obviously, some of these purplish tones over it. So I'm just going to bring this warm grey five down here, glazing over the top there. Like so, uh, use the light red violet again. Go over the top of this warm grey five, and on top of that warm grey there. And then I'm just going to bring this copper over this section here. We're going to start blending these two areas together now, and then back to the warm grey five. And I'm just building up these layers gently. Light red violet again. I don't want to rush the build up of those layers because I don't want it to look too grey, but you don't want it to look too purple. Like you want this blend to be really nice. And then again, just blend these two areas in. And then the one grey five here. So we're coming now into this shadowed area. Right, so we're coming into the shadow, so I'm going to start applying this warm grey 5 higher up. Along here. And I'm being mindful that we do have this fur coming over the tongue. Now if you've been watching along and you haven't started this piece yet, you could do the tongue first before you do this um, muzzle.
but it's all personal choice. I just like getting that muzzle in around that nose. Okay, so that's the one grey five. We want the um, Payne's grey. Payne's grey or dark indigo? We'll use Payne's grey. Um, I'm not quite sure what my indigo is, so Payne's grey is fine. Darkening this middle line here and this section here. Now, people are going to think this is crazy using these dark colours, but when you see it all come together at the end, you're going to see that using these grey tones really, really helps. Um, so we're using this in the shadows, is the Payne's Grey. And I'm just going to put them that downwards. So you can kind of see, again, I'm working upwards, but they're meeting in the middle. Seems to be the easiest way for me to um, work on pieces like this. Especially when you've got like a really dark section meeting a lighter section. It's easier for me to get them to blend in the middle. So I'm just using this Payne's Grey along this top section of the tongue. Um, and then I'm going to get the red violet. And come over the top of this one grey five. Here, so one grey five over the top of the red violet. You can see that I'm overlapping those areas that I've done before and it's just going to help get this nice blend between the colours. And that's the red violet and then the warm grey five. Well we've got the warm grey five here and then back to the Payne's grey for this shadowed area. Blend over the top of the red violet ever so slightly. You can see now we've got a nice blend between these areas. So we're just going to do the same here. Go back in with this Payne's Grey. And I'll we'll lighten this area where I can see the purple violet. Uh, not purple violet, red violet, sorry. Um, and there's the red violet. And then over the top again with the Payne's Grey. So that red violet is just going to show through ever so slightly the Payne's Grey. Um, and it's going to look quite nice. Okay, so we just need to do this section of the tongue now. So we're going to start again from uh, the corner of the tongue and work midway and then come back down. So... Again, I've got the putty razor, just going to lift that graphite and then the beige red. Um, light red violet. Okay, so we do have a darker section here, so I'm just looking. We're going to get the uh, red violet. So using, which is uh, making quite a nice shadowed colour just along here. And bring that up like so. Let me just get that beige red underneath here. So yeah, I think once I've done this tongue, um, I'll get this uploaded, edited and uploaded, and then do the next part of the mouth and get them uh, out at this similar time. Um, otherwise, it's going to be like a two hour video um, just for the tongue and the mouth area. Um, I'll get the middle cadmium red. I do see this nice red tone here on this part of the tongue. So you can see, obviously, I the way that I work isn't quick. It's all about getting those really subtle colours in and building it up slowly. 
Oh, that was the pink meadow lake and now the beige red. Okay. Um, and now I'm just going to do along here, lift up this graphite. So yeah, I work quite slowly. I'm not the quickest. I like to get a lot of the colours in that I can see. Um, so don't worry if you've gone ahead and finished this or you don't want to put in as many colours. That's completely fine. Um, right, I'm going to use this beige red. So I'm remembering that this tongue is curving over here. Remembering the shape of this tongue. Um, and I'm going to do this beige red along this edge here. To about there. Um, and then that tongue bit here is sort of coming down to about there. Okay, so we get the uh, light red violet. Get my shadows in. Along here, and a light red violet along this edge. So I'm just curving up along this edge because it's a, the tongue is curved here. Get the pink metal lake. I'm going back in with the purple violet. I get the um, copper as well. Back in with copper over this purple violet. So I'm trying to make sure that the colours I've used on this side, I'm using where I can see them on this side of the tongue as well. So they all flows together. Because even though we're doing it in sections, we still want it all to look natural and part of the same tongue. And then pink meadow lake again. A bit harder pressure now, just to bring these colours in. Purple violet. Just flicking between the purple violet, uh, pink madder leg and the light purple violet for those colours there. Um, and then I'm going to get the warm grey worn as the base layer here. About halfway in this section, it's quite a grey tone. Um, so I'm going to use the warm grey five again. Along here, it's going to be dark in that corner here. I'm just marking out where I can see the shadows. And then it's quite a dark tone here. And then I'm going to use the Kaput Mortem. Uh, yeah, Kaput Mortem along here. Along that warm grey five, warm grey five again. Just slowly building up these layers. Um, get that paint grey where it's the darkest shadow here. I'm just going to add this Payne's Grey in here. Okay, I need the, um, I'll just get the black. Just want this midline just to be darker. So I'll just get the black here. Okay, that's better. <laughs> and then let's get the one grey one. Base, beige red, 
So we want this to start blending nicely into this tool. A nice colourful tool. Okay. So we're going to get the light red violet along here. So we have got like a nice light line. So I'm making sure I leave that beige red um, open, exposed. <laughs> uh, this is the light red violet along here. Let me get the copper over the top of this. So we'll get the um, copper. I hope you can see how this copper's working nicely. I'm not pressing too hard with the copper, but um, it's giving us a nice muted grey tone where the um, purple violet is shining through. Um, if you don't have copper, just use um, like a warm grey free um, over the top. Just get the pink madder lake back. I just want these areas to look blending now. Okay, that looks better. Right, so we're going to get the um, purple violet up here. We're going to get this blended into the Payne's Grey. Um, a bit of a kaput mortem. I'm using circular motion to do this tongue and it's creating its own texture which is fine. Um, it's giving you a bit, a bit of texture on this tongue which is perfectly fine. Um, and this is the Payne's Grey just over the top of those. Okay, I'm getting there with this tongue now. It's looking quite nice. Right, I'm going to get the beige red down here. It goes into this corner about there right this is where it starts getting quite dark so i'm not going to worry about the whiskers coming over the top of this tool i'm going to add them afterwards um whether i do that with a slice tool or the titanium touch-up texture i'm not quite sure yet but um i'm not going to worry too much about adding them in and drawing around them just for ease of doing this tool um so i'm going to get the put mortem along here and again remembering that I'm, I am making sure that this bits of this fur look like fur so I'm going up into the fur to create it looking like it's overlapping this tongue um, and then I'm just going to add this put Martin Um, I'm going to get the Venetian red again. Because we do have this pinkish tone, but it is very muted in colour, so let's use the Venetian red. Over the top of these layers again. And then back to the Caput Martum. And then the Payne's Grey back in this area here. The Payne's Grey, you can use dark indigo as well um, instead of the Payne's Grey. Just gives you that nice bluish tone for the shadows in the um, on the tongue. Um, and then I'm going to use the Pink Madder Lake over the top. I think I may mute all this actually with the warm grey five. We'll see, we'll see what it looks like. It may be okay. May not need it. But we do need the Payne's grey coming a bit further down here though. 
So that was the pink madelite just helps smooth all that out. Um, and then back in with the Payne's Grey here. Just a bit more put more to them. Um, the light red violet. Again, I'm just, I'm almost glazing over the top. I don't want to press too hard. I just want this glaze of colour over the top there. Um, okay, and then I'm going to use the put mortem on the edge of this tongue here. As we're getting into this shadowed area. Coming up here. Um, the red violet in this corner. Now a lot of this will end up being removed or covered but you're going to have that hint of the colours once you've added colours on top. Uh, put Morton. Once we've got these whiskers in you're still going to see some of this colouring showing through. Um, Let's get back to the Venetian red. Just along here, um, and then the beige red. Harder pressure, just to help smooth it out. Okay, now we've got the dark part of the tongue to add, um, which won't take us as long. Um, so I'm going to start in this section with the red violet um, and I'm just going to, it's a sharp pencil outline here that's coming down and that's going to be the gum there and that's quite dark here so I'm just constantly looking where it's dark, where I can see this colour and then just darken this area up and then I'm using a lighter pressure here where I don't want it to be as dark and I'm going to go in here with uh, Van Dyke Brown over the, the top of that red violet in this lighter area just along here um, and then get the warm grey one and I'm going to use the one grey one to blend these two together. And this is going to give us this glossy look. Um, and then the red violet on top. Just to darken that area there. Okay, so the red violet along here. And then it's going into like that Payne's grey colour again. So I'm going to do that and then get the Payne's grey. And we're just going to start this little blend here. Right. So, oops, that's not red violet. Get the red violet along the edge here. And then the Payne's Grey. Um, and then I'm just going to add this bit of the tongue. I haven't come far enough back. So that's red violet there. Um, and then the Payne's Grey. Right, so I'm going to outline along here with this red violet. Most of this is this like red violet going over the top of it then with like your Payne's greys. So I'm just going to outline where we can see these teeth. And then it's quite dark in the back there.
we've got the Payne's Grey. So the Payne's Grey comes to about here being quite dark. So she's quite hard pressure. And I'm just going to quickly build up this layer of colour. Just swapping between the red violet and the Payne's Grey. That's my Payne's Grey here. It's nice and dark here now. Um, so I'm just going to add another layer of this Payne's Grey, uh, Red Violet. And then I'm just looking at the reference photo where it's dark. I'm adding this Payne's Grey as the shadows. Obviously we need this bit to blend and then it's quite dark here. Got a shape. Um and then I've got the Van Dyke Brown again just along here. And we'll top that too. And then I'll go over the top with the red violet. Got the paint's grey just to darken any shadows that need to be darkened up again. I'm using the paint's grey for that and just to help blend these two areas. And then the warm grey one, which is just just to help blend everything. Nicely and smoothly. Just go back over any areas where it's a bit too light. The red violet here. Okay, um, I'm just going to take the Payne's Grey. Just going to extend the shadow a little bit, ever so slightly here. Along so. Okay, so there we go. We've uh, got the tongue and the inner mouth done. Which might not seem like much, but the amount of colours that have gone into this tongue to make it look realistic is a lot um so yeah i hope this has helped especially when it comes to doing tongues don't be afraid to use those grays and blues when it comes to tongues they're not all pinks um you could even use more browns within the actual tongue itself um but yeah i hope this has helped this is part four done uh part five i'm gonna get filmed um straight away we're gonna just finish this mouth so that'll be the teeth and the gums um, and then it'll be on to finishing the rest of the border collie, which hopefully won't take too long. Um, I'm trying to go as, not quick, but as quick as I can. Um, it's turning out to be quite a long tutorial, but I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you're learning something. Any questions, do let me know uh, below. Um, like, subscribe, do all the YouTube things. <laughs> it does help my channel out. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, everybody.